my friends welcome back to the channel we are here at the scott's motorcycle show i have my friend here paulo paulo say hello to you guys how are you guys Hi. so that's the 2024 edition uh, so we're gonna have a look and we are starting here at the royal enfield stand that's right at the end so that's really the start of the show so let's see some of the classic bikes that they have here they are coming up with cracking bikes nowadays and uh, quite good prices as well so let's have a look shall we Paul is already here on the shotgun 650 it's quite a nice bike to be honest with you uh, I had the sit as well and it's, it's quite comf comfortable your angle of the leg there is uh, it's quite nice uh, you don't feel as cramped or anything so that's a 650 there is no price, so I'm assuming that will be for free. No, but <laughs> jokes aside, the prices are actually quite good and it's very difficult to say no to a bike like this. But I'm going to show you one bike that uh, I kind of really want to buy. Let me show you. And it is this one here, guys. It's uh, the Bullet 350 look at the looks of this bike this costs like about four thousand and five hundred pounds <laughs> it's a 350 cheap to run insurance is cheap road tax is cheap um does i don't know many uh, miles per gallon but it's very efficient bike to run and actually i was expecting this to be worse but it's actually i feel comfortable here i feel very comfortable on this wee bike I can imagine this during the winter <laughs> I mean you can't even take her off-road I've seen people doing it so uh, why not uh, it is a <laughs> yeah so you can go faster you need to <laughs> you need to lean a bit because of the wind uh, I think the speed on this one the maximum speed is about like 70 miles or whatever I mean yeah it shows 100 there but uh, yeah might may, maybe if you're going down the hill and it comes already with a, a center stand here so it makes it easy for maintenance and things like that but yeah it's a cracking look so i for me it will be either this one or the classics the classic 350 that i need to see exactly where it is but paulo is already on um, the cruiser one the super meteor 650. do you like it i like it very good for my arms it's the best yeah good for your arms hey it seems like you're comfortable there how do you find like the feet being a bit forward it's good, it's nice. it's good. your next bike then <laughs> i mean that's the thing like they are becoming ever more re reliable and then for the prices once again you are going i'm focused a lot on on the price because in reality it is this is a six grand bike and I know there are not many bikes on the market like cruiser like uh, that cheap all right like, so you have the Vulcan S which nowadays might be around 7k uh, you have the on the rebel um, that will be about the same price as well so yeah the prices are creeping up uh, quite fast but uh, the um, super meteor it's actually quite uh, quite decent and it looks good with uh, the exhaust there on the back look at this oh it's uh, very cool this is the classic 350 so we saw there the the bullet 350 this is a classic 350 uh, i struggle to find the differences of course like there you have the seats there the wee thing on the front that actually looks quite cool on this one and i'm kind of I do like the black, but if I was to get it, I would get something, uh, something different. I don't know, a different kind of color, like a green or something like that. I'm set on the classic 350, and uh, just like the bullet, I mean, the riding position seems to be pretty much the same. And I have my cameraman now here. <laughs> yeah, I can see you. Can you see me? <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> 
Je hebt te meteen te wassen. Ik ben nieuw bij dit stuff. Sitting position, I mean, seems to be pretty much the same. Um, you know, my arms here, they are quite at a you know, good position as well for what it is. Which one do you like the, the looks But I mean, if you can remember all the differences between this one and that one, which is like... The look of this one. So yeah, like all black one or... Yeah, I... Yeah, I feel comfortable on this thing, man. I really want to take this for a test drive. I think this would be absolutely... You know, awesome to ride. Of course, we're not going to break any ra speed records or anything like that. Uh, but for what these bikes are made for, I think this will be awesome. We're going to have a look at all these bikes. And of course, there's the Himalayan. Not my kind of bike, but you know, for the price as well, you could buy it. Interceptor, 650. Slightly higher for me, so I'm a short leg guy, so <laughs> I'm not, I don't feel comfortable here. No, no, but it's not, it's not the one for you. No, no, not the one for me. No. Yeah, Tiptoeing it a bit. Yeah. No. Yeah, Seems handy. It's very easy to, to ride it. So yeah, nice bar right. here to the. Yeah, so you can put your phone there. Phone, yeah. It's nice. Part of that. Some other guy, a guy like you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the badge there. Now we are at the CF Moto uh, stand. Uh, Paulo is there on uh, 800 MT turning. Again, oh, nice, nice price, uh, 9,000 pounds. And actually looks not too bad. It has some uh, GS-ish type of light, type of look, especially here with uh, with the tank that gets a bit wide. Um, but yeah, I had to sit on it as well, but. Uh, it, I mean, first of all, it's not really my uh, kind of bike, um, but it's too tall. You know, I like I like to have my feet planted on the on the floor, um, just like Paulo. It was like his feet was like. Beer. So there you go. You can fit quite a few beers on this one. Oh, that that's good. If you need to fly, right, and bring wine from Portugal as I do, you can buy these things on Amazon. That's what I do, and I bring like a shitload of wine. <laughs> I was even stopped once. How much do you think this this one is? Okay, have a good look. Have a good look at the bike, all right? Hello, resembles a bit like, I don't know, a Honda or something. Nice exhaust, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm hiding the price so he doesn't see it. If you're, uh, you're hiding, I don't know, 10? What do you guys think, 10K? 10K, it's my guess, I don't know. All right. Shall we have a look? Let's go. How do you oh, feel? How, how, how do you feel about that now? Six. Well, <laughs> you got the deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, this this is a dangerous place to come. You know, when you have uh, bikes <laughs> with these kind of prices. You know, uh, yeah, for the price and if you like this kind of look, but well, I never rode it, so I, I, don't, I don't really know how. It actually feels how the engine is and all that, but uh, six thousand is uh, you know is a very decent price for a machine nowadays. You know, I'm on this one. I have no idea. It seems to be a baby brother of uh, of that one there. Um, you know, have the same type of uh, shape on the tank. is much smaller, of course. At least seems like it. You have a very good uh, riding position on, uh, on this thing, to be honest. So uh, yeah. I just don't know anything about reliability, if the engine is good or not, brakes and not, and all that. But uh, how much is this one? It's what? cheaper than the, the previous one. 550? Five Less. Less? Less. How much? 5 5K. 5K. And that's a 650? 650. Oh well, goodbye. I'm trying here uh, a Skvarna Norton 900, uh, something like that. Uh, and uh, my cameraman is gonna film me. And uh, yeah, film my, my feet. There you go. I know it's uh, <laughs> it's all right. That's what happens when you're when you are a short guy. Um, <laughs> uh, I would not feel that comfortable on a bike like that. I mean, I can flat-footed 
but you need to shift your uh, your body to this side then it will be all right it's all down to technique at the end of the day isn't it and if you are used to do that that's fine the same way like to this side if i shift my weight there you go i'm i'm flat footing uh, the bike easily there you go cameraman coming from this side um, but still you know that's um if you need to do this in a hurry uh, you might find yourself kissing the ground you know <laughs> <laughs> and I prefer not to kiss the ground. <laughs> Paulo, yeah. do you want to have a seat, a seat on uh, this one? La 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 let's have a laugh with Paulo on the bike now. There you go. I'm out of the bike and now let's see our friends. Uh, where, where's your feet at? Where's your feet at? <laughs> Uh, if you shift your weight here, then I uh, there's a you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we found Paulo's dream bike. Yes. All right, Paulo is getting on it. Uh, it's you too, man. Uh, yeah, it's slightly lower, isn't it? I mean, I mean, it has a huge presence. It has a huge presence. You look at this bike, like, damn, that's a big bike. We are here at the Kawasaki stand now, and we are in front of uh, the Kawasaki Vulcan S. And you that follow the channel, you know I had one for about three years. Uh, so we've been uh, looking at bikes. Uh, Paulo has been trying uh, a couple of bikes and uh, he said from all the ones we tried so far this is the one he feels more comfortable hmm. and uh, to be fair it's a cracking machine so Paulo you were saying this is uh, or the bike you like the most so far yes. uh, like a journalist <laughs> <laughs> for the ones we try it till now this is the one for me, let's say. I'm more comfortable with these ones. My feet is touch the floor, so I'm I, very, very comfortable. Do you like that uh, fit forward position, like yes. proper cruiser type of... Uh, yeah. Exactly, the ones I, I'm expecting to to oh. buy one of these days. So let's there, see. There you go. Let's give it do a, you have a try. Do you have to, to have a seat, or do you like to have a seat, just so the viewers can see it? There you go, that's Paul on... Uh, I can touch the, the, the floor easily. You still have a wee band on your knee, so that's good. Fantastic. You feel comfortable, your arms not too stretch. All right, good. So I don't know if you can hear, but you say that the arm is not, the arms are not too stretch or anything. Uh -huh. You're not leaning forward too much or anything. All right. Well, I think look, looking at it, what do you guys think? I think uh, it suits me. Eh? There you go, in style. I need your clothes, your boots and your motorcycle. <laughs> so that's the first time you're having a look at uh, Kawasaki Eliminator 500. And uh, oh, actually it looks all right, man. Actually it looks nice. I like it in uh, this uh, full black uh, scheme. Actually it looks very nice. Uh, but Paul was saying, in terms of riding position, comfort, and all that, um, I don't know what you can judge by just sitting on the bike. That he prefers the other one. Let's see if that's still the case. So, is that still the case? You feel more comfortable in the other one? So, you prefer the, the other one then? I keep preferring the, the previous one. The yeah, the Vulcan S. Vulcan S. Much better. It's one uh, larger, it's more yeah, larger. yeah. The tank is is a bit thinner on this one, yeah. but but the seat is larger here for me. Yeah. Hey, still looks good, and this one is 6,400 pounds. Now we are at uh, a place more like my style, you know. Uh, well, the Vulcan S is my style as well, but here you can find other more traditional type of cruisers. So we are at the Indian um, South Tire stand. Uh, so of course you have your Indian Scout that I did uh, do a test ride some uh, some years ago as I was thinking about having the bike as um, as a replacement for the Vulcan S. 
Uh, I do like this one here, uh, the Scout Rogue. I think this bike looks very, very good. I have a Mini Apes already. Uh, it's full blacked out, great looking bike. Uh, 14,000 um, pounds. Yeah, again, price are going up, but uh, still a, a, a cracking machine. And if it is what you like, that you cannot really go wrong, to be honest. Um, but I don't know. In terms of color scheme, I think between that black one and that and this one, I think I would have the boba. Yeah, the red with uh, the chrome and the black. Uh, man, what say? Do you agree with me? Between that one there and this one here, so the the black one. The black the one yeah, which one would you think looks better? The, the red one here. See, he is a man of good taste. <laughs> <laughs> this is the um, Chief Bobber Dark Horse. It's a more, of course, refined machine. We have, uh, you know, this is your digital display here already with the maps and uh, all that. The only complaint I had, I never end up like actually trying this bike. Uh, but one thing that I noticed on some videos was the interface seemed a bit slow. So like, eh, needs a bit more ram or uh, i7 14700k or something like that there paul is living the dream today uh, how, how do you feel now with your arms slightly higher uh, i mean you can see already you're like hey your posture is like much more upright yeah 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 it makes a difference man a difference do you want to guess how much it is <laughs> We're gonna have a look at the Harleys. Uh, you know them already, but let's see if they have anything new. So if you want to follow a, a more adventure type of bike, you have the Pan American. But I'll tell you, I mean, it's not my thing, but lots of people, they see this bike and they love this bike. And you know, especially when they try it, it's becoming very, very popular. So there you go. Paulo again is having a, a shot at it. Yeah. But it has a nice system, I mean, if you pay for that, of course, which the suspension lowers automatically when you're coming to a stop. So when you start to ride, it increases the height to so have a more like comfortable ride. But as soon as you're coming to a stop, it lowers down like... I don't know what position that is. Probably it's not a bike with that system, I don't know. But uh, all right. we're going to have a look at uh, some of the other ones. Uh, of course, you know, the Lowrider ST that I uh, had for a while, and I was actually thinking about buying one for myself, but uh, shit happened. I mean, it doesn't seem too too bad for you, but because I'm a bit taller, I was like, my knees were like up there. The advantage is from the economic size. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the ready position at the end of the day is not too bad. And for me, a few adjustments uh, would be nice, having this slightly brought force to you and that a bit forward as well for me that will be enough but it's a cracking machine man I uh, really really enjoyed it when I had it for a few weeks uh, that's Paulo's face when he looked <laughs> at, at the price so it was like uh, no, no. Nope. For me. not today <laughs> not today tomorrow maybe so of course we're like going pass you on the Harley Davidson <laughs> stand and uh, Paul just saw that price here for um, the CVO Street Glide and uh, I had to pick him up he fell on the floor I had to put his legs up but it, are you, you're better I, I'm better bad. now you, so he's better now you solo. guys don't need to worry he's, he's okay now he might have to go back to the Royal Enfield uh, stand so he can recover fully. <laughs> but, I mean, it. it's a cracking machine. I mean, that's a, a hell of a paint job. Like the colors, uh, I do like it. I do like the color as well. It's fantastic. In some places, you could buy a house with it. But hey, it's the nature of the game, my friends. It's the nature of the game. Of course, you have like your fancy display here. I mean, it's bigger than the display I have in my car. So it just has a <laughs> tiny one. You know, it has like sat navs and music. We have your speakers here, speakers there. 
you know, like, what else would you like? Oh, I like, I like this one. Any fridge included? Huh? Any fridge included here? Yes, yes, and the coffee machine and the yeah. beer machine. <laughs> we had to have a, a, sit, a seat here at the... <laughs> we were like, nope. No, I'm not even gonna try <laughs> to stand this bike up. Uh, it's a it's a heavy bike. I don't know if it says here, but it's like north of 300 kilos. Well, 300 kilos. That's mine. Mine is 320. Uh, so that's like 400. Yeah. Mobile phone, wallet. Mobile phone. I don't know. If does it fit a mobile phone? Oh, uh, actually, actually it does. But I'm taking mine out. Okay, so we are, we are doing a, pro, a proper test test of this thing. So can you fit your wallet there? My wallet? And my, no and my phone? Uh, and my wallet is too fat, it's full of money. Uh, uh, yeah, so you can buy one of those, that's fine. All right, so let's move my phone first. So that's my phone. Uh, that is wallet. And I, I'm not going to close just in case it doesn't open again. <laughs> there you go. So if you're asking, I'm all, I want to buy a new road glide. Will my wallet and my phone fit on one of these, uh, let's call it glove boxes? Yes, it will. There you go, got my phone back, just in case. <laughs> so, this guy just bought a Harley. For me, he said. Which one is it? Oh, wait. Which one do you want? <laughs> Which one I want? <laughs> decisions, decisions. This is getting serious. See, that's why you cannot come to this event with a wallet full of money, okay? Don't do that. It's dangerous. We just left uh, Andibala, well, not Andibala, the Harley Davidson stand there. Met a few people that know the channel as well, so good to meet you guys. If you want to buy some bicycles you have some bicycles here uh, electrical bicycles I'm assuming uh, but for that price I would buy a Royal Enfield I would give it another 400 pounds on top I'd buy a Royal Enfield uh, but hey there's a market for that you know so uh, that's it one of the bikes from Yamaha that I always liked uh, and I did uh, ride one of these uh, is the Tracer, well it's called Tracer 7 now, uh, I did rode the uh, Tracer 700 uh, back a few years ago, uh, it's a cracking machine, you know if you like this type of adventure type of bike, the Tracer 7, this one is a GT so it comes with bags and all that, it's a uh, a lovely machine I actually do like it a lot and the price is actually all right you know less than 10,000 K my cameraman Paulo is again filming me filming a uh, filming me, me Jesus and there you go that will be my feet on the floor I cannot get both on on the ground but I can get one like this and the other one tiptoeing so um, yeah but you know it's okay if you just do like that it's all right you don't have to shift your body that much just this probably Paulo will be like this again you know but uh, it's <laughs> it's a comfortable machine when I rode it I absolutely loved it and I was this close to actually buy it that was like 2018 uh, after I did my uh, bike license so uh, yeah I I do like it man Uh, hey, hey. I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, okay. Well, th th there is a solution. There is another solution. What? We can buy uh, two small wheels and put that on the back. Okay. So then you don't need. Never, never fall down. You never fall down. You never fall down with that. Uh, what do you guys I think? We, we'll uh, do um, a GoFundMe for Paulo and <laughs> get some wheels. <laughs> I'm set at the Tracer 9 GT, is this a G? Yeah, it is. And the first thing I noticed, I mean, yeah, I can, it's slightly taller than the, than the 7. But the first thing I noticed was um, the seat is extremely hard. Whew. Uh, I mean, on the long run, might be actually better than the, the Tracer 7, but uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. That's the hardest seat I've tried so far. 
try not to fall as I'm coming down. But uh, yeah, I mean, I like the looks of this one. It's like, I know, sport tourer type of uh, type of bike. Uh, you can fit a helmet on this one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a brilliant machine, a brilliant machine. But that's like 15k already. So we're just uh, here at the hall uh, where we have like the different clubs, the Dunedin uh, chapter is right there, we're gonna go in a moment as well, uh, but here we are uh, next to the Scottish Pen Riders and of course that's your bikes here, you can imagine this being uh, a bit heavy, but it's a cracking looking bike, you know, I mean for touring and all that, it's good. Oh, one bike I haven't seen yet is um, the Goldwing. Oh, Goldwing, yes. Actually, was there a Honda there? Yeah, we don't see a Honda. Honda's not there, I think. I don't remember seeing a uh, Honda stand. I think that's the problem. Like, there's some manufacturers missing on, um, on the main hall, so that's a bit crap, you know. But uh, hey, oh, it is what it is. All right, let's uh, keep going. Uh, have a look at this uh, this bikes that we have here. So we're looking at uh, some uh, classic bikes and uh, Paolo was saying this might be one of the oldest ones so far that you've seen from uh, 1936, 37, 38 and 58. But I mean you look at that and we look at uh, Roy Enfield they kind of share you know the same look like type of era I don't know so yeah they look they look good of course much much older it's awesome to see this bike still running eh? if I get in Roy Enfield I'll be getting that oh, the, plate there. the plate there I think is uh, I know it's the cherry on top of, of it you know all right so let's uh, continue and have a look we don't really have much time left. It's uh, 25 to 5. Oops. Uh, so yeah, that's the, the Nortons as we were uh, saying. Nice classic bikes. Uh, there's some more Royal Fields here that I'm going to show you in uh, just a second. So let's just have a look at some more here. 66, 60. 50s, 34, there you go, and I'm assuming this is kind of a star of the show, or something like that, very good, uh, let's have a look here, there is a, a Royal Enfield, but this case is uh, the old ones of course, so you have the bullets, so the one I was considering getting, but uh, new, which, uh, you know, design wise, it still shares lots of uh, Lots of lines, let's say it like that. And this is the constellation. If you had both side to side, you see like, you know, and if you don't look at the details like these brakes and all that, you'll see, you'll see like they are both from the same year, maybe or the same era, let's say. Of course, uh, there's more places with uh, beers and all that. This would not be a biking festival without uh, some beers available for us. I'm driving, so unfortunately no beer for me and uh, Paul will be driving later on uh, after we uh, leave here as well, so uh, yeah, I'm afraid uh, we will be dry today. This area here is really for you to engage with, um, you know, with the owners of other bikes, with the clubs and all that, and you can see like bikes that you don't usually see it out there on the streets, uh, like this one here, absolutely cracking machine, I mean, what the hell. 
from 67 i would say that would be this would look like older than that but anyway it's uh it's awesome awesome that we can come here and see bikes like uh, like these this is you know it's 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 phenomenal it's uh it's awesome see what i was saying like we put like a Royal enfield one of the more than ones next to uh uh, a more vintage type of bike. I mean, you have here, this one is from 2016. And is he uh, next to a BSA, for example, that one is from uh, 1960. Uh, uh, you know, you can't really, if you don't look at small details like there or whatever, you can't really say that, oh, this bike is way modern than that one. You know, it kind of seems out of the same era, like 50s or 60s or something like that. So I have some more here. Very old machines, fantastic oh, yeah. machines. <laughs> All right, this one is as old as Paolo. Uh, uh, see. I'm in better shape. <laughs> <laughs> you are not as rusty. No, I'm not so rusty yet. <laughs> yet. You need to drink whiskey for that, you know. <laughs> Alright, so amazing machines, man. There is this thing here, uh, which is uh, it says Zeta. I'm going to show you there. Says that a scooter from 1970. Uh, wow, def definitely it is something. It, lo it looks awesome though. I mean, can you imagine going down the the road on something like that? I I mean, condition-wise. Brand new condition. From 1970, I said. Yeah. So that's uh, 50, 54 years old. And it is like this. That is much better condition than me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Even, even better than me, to be honest. Of course, as I'm a cruiser guy, um, there is some uh, very classic Indian here. Uh, I believe I shown this one uh, last year. I think this is the Chief from 1947. Again, an excellent example that uh, you know you don't see it on the road. I'm not entirely sure if the owner actually rides this as much or not, but probably like would be like a bike, or at least it was me to ride it uh, a couple of times a year when the weather is absolutely spot on, because um, this is a bike to treasure. So we think we found you the perfect bike. The perfect bike for me is this one. This you one. have small wheels front and back you have adjustable uh, seat as well all right you have a horn i like the horn you have a wee wait, horn wait, wait, wait. Eh, eh, eh. and i can put my knees on the floor not the foot the knees on the, the knees the <laughs> knees eh? you feel extremely comfortable <laughs> and safe on this one huh Nothing what do you say like that, no? so you need to find the owner of this one and uh, make a deal with him the you guy. might he buys a Harley and trades the Harley for this one. It should be a better deal. And better deal than that, it will be possible. <laughs> we found something really special. I mean, we found lots of things that were very special here, but you're gonna agree with me that this ones here, they are a rare breed. That's uh, a Beaumont special from 1919 so slightly older than me and paul you know you have to work a bit i have like some pedals there uh, but this is awesome that's the vintage and classic motorcycle club from uh, 1910s all the way to the 90s oh did i say it's closing <laughs> gonna have to wait because i haven't seen all the bikes yet on the monkey with the monkey uh, how cool is that, guys? The With the sidecar. Side With another wee monkey there. <laughs> and we found a train, a train bike. So we have a gold wing here. With a huge trailer. Um, I, how, many, how many meters do you reckon this will be? Uh, 10 meters? 10 meters, roughly, yeah. Hi. Need class two Jesus. license. <laughs> I try to park this thing on the street. Eh? <laughs> so they are closing. We have like eight minutes left and uh, the security people are already there. 
So what we think is gonna happen, they'll come with like a, how do you call it? Uh, a whip. A whip or something like that. And like, move, ja, ja. And yeah, so we, we better crack on with this. And well, my friends, that's uh, the Scottish Motorcycle Show 2024 done for both of us. Because uh, we, we are already being chased by people with uh, whips and things like that. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, we have to go. We were having great fun, but uh, I had no idea this would close at uh, five. I thought it would be like, I don't know, at least six or seven or eight or something like that. But nope. Oh, well, next year, no. Paulo, did you enjoy that? Yes, it was very, very pleasant. I've never been to this event. It was there you go, there you go. I got the microphone. I'm a proper, <laughs> proper journalist here. I yes. Don't know. So I enjoy it very, very much. It's my first time here, so give it a try. Yeah. All the bikes I could. <laughs> uh, well, what was the, the, your most favorite thing? The thing you most enjoyed doing at uh, this, uh, this uh, Scottish Motorcycle Show event of 2024? Well, talking especially with the guy from Harley Davis, he sold me a bike, almost, almost. So uh, at least convinced me to do the, it, the driving it, test. I think he's like... Uh, 20 something pounds per now. <laughs> yeah, something, something like that, yes. <laughs> so, no, it was, was very pleasant. People very friendly, very available to, to talk about everything. Yeah. Was, available. was there a bike that you think was the, st the star of the show well, this year? <laughs> well, for the could, first year. Could, could not be for you guys, but I enjoyed very much the, the Vulcan S. I enjoyed very, very much the position to ride. I was comfortable on that, 100%. Yeah, the bike convinced you to... Uh, yes, probably... At least give it a shot with a test ride. Test ride, yes, for right. sure. So I will get a try, go to the website from the guys and yeah. try to... Well, to le one. Le let's just... When, when... So you booked a test ride or something like that, yes, yeah? For, for the Harley Davidson. Yes. Was that at uh, Edinburgh or Glasgow? Uh, I choose Edinburgh. All right, fantastic. So we have awesome news here. Uh, breaking news uh, for Paulo, because at Edinburgh Harley Davidson, just next door, they have Kawasaki. All right, so they are the dealers as well uh, of the Kawasaki, and they have the Vulcan S there. So Paulo, you can do two test rides in one day. You go there to test ride the Harley Davidson. And then you do a test ride for the Vulcan S. Or does that sound to you? Well, I'm surprised. So two in one. What can I ask it for? <laughs> All right. See, and you're saying like uh, these guys might not in like it that much, but you're wrong, my friends, because I did start my uh, moto, cha mo moto, mo <laughs> moto channel, <laughs> motorcycle channel, um, with my Vulcan S. All so right. they will know that awesome bike. Okay. So guys, we have here. A future owner Who? this well that and uh, Harley Davidson as well because uh, you know um, it's full of money this guy <laughs> 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 oh but uh, that's us it is raining a bit we are on our way out now as you can see uh, so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, this video with us today looking at all the bikes and all that and uh, oh Michael Fon is here and uh, don't forget to like subscribe and all that and i'll see you on the next one maybe paul will be there too hi well never know you never know so. <laughs> <laughs> i'll see you guys soon take care